Hi there, this is Matt Allington, and in my video today, I'm going to talk about a particular business problem where my client wanted to be able to capture data from department managers. In this case, the data was change to the headcount in their department. And so let me give you an illustration looking at this top Excel table here. The sales department wanted to increase the headcount in their department by four people in the year 2021. No change in 2022 and then a further two people increase in 2023. Now that's all well and good, but when it comes to doing headcount reporting, we end up needing a table like this so that we can actually take the total number of increased headcount at any point in time. So even though we increased headcount by four in 2021, there was still additional four headcount in 2022 and so on. Now, of course, it would be possible for the department managers to place 44666, but that would require them to do some mental mathematics in order to keep up with how many headcount they were adding. And frankly, we should always try and let the end user enter the data as simply as possible and then hopefully use the tools at our disposal, including Power Query and also Power BI to manage the reporting aspects. And so in the video today, I'm going to show you how to take this table at the top as an input, but then produce this table at the bottom as the output using a little bit of DAX, a little bit of Power Query, both inside Power BI. Okay, so here I have my Excel spreadsheet and what I might do is just put something in here like a minus one just to complete the different types of use cases that could happen. And so just keep in mind that this is a spreadsheet which records the change in headcount in any given year and therefore we want to report on the total change in headcount as it occurs and accumulates over multiple years. So I'll just save that spreadsheet and then shut it down. And I'll move over to Power BI and import the data. So I'll get data from Excel. Here is my Excel spreadsheet. I'll connect to the table. It's good practice to use tables for this type of data. It maintains formatting and also makes sure that as the table grows over time, they'll always be added to the import. So I'm just going to go transform data and the first stage is to just use Power Query to reshape this data to something that's more useful. And so I've got the department here. The first thing I'm going to do is unpivot this data. So I'll right click and unpivot other columns. And I will rename these columns from attribute and value. Now I could just come in here, double click, call that year, double click, call that headcount. But I like to get under the hood inside Power Query and so I'm going to turn on the formula bar and notice that the unpivot other columns automatically named these two columns and so this, these are just default names that were automatically generated by the M language and I'm just going to go in and edit those lines so this is going to be year and this is going to be headcount I'm not saying this is more efficient than doing it the other way, but it certainly means that there will be less applied steps. And in a way, it just makes the whole thing uh, easier and more compact. So plus I like learning the M language. And so now we've got a headcount column. This is actually the change in headcount in any given year. In fact, I might call this the change in headcount by year. And of course, I've got the departments here. So I'm going to go ahead and load this. But what I will do, first of all, is I'm going to create a calendar table. So I will reference the input and I'll rename this. I'll just call it years. And so then I can remove other columns, remove duplicates. And now I've got a simple calendar table. In this case, the calendar table is at the year level of granularity. And instead of calling this input, once I've manipulated it, it actually becomes my headcount data. And so with that, I can go File, Close and Apply. And now I'll move over to DAX. OK, so here we are in Power BI Desktop. I'll jump over to the model view. You'll note that Power BI automatically created a relationship. It was able to match the year column in both tables. 
and it automatically generated this one to many relationship. It is good practice once you have a relationship to hide the column on the many side of the relationship. You don't want to be using this column. Generally speaking, you should be using this one instead. And so I'm just going to hide the year column from the headcount data. Just means that people are less likely to make a mistake and use the wrong column. So now I'll come over here and I'll create a matrix and let's bring in the years, go on to the columns and I'll bring the department onto rows and I'll just bring that change in headcount in here. And at this point in time, it looks exactly like the data input sheet. And so we're off to a good start. But now, of course, the requirement is to get that cumulative change so that we can see the total change in headcount in any given year. Now, this is not a super hard thing to do using DAX. Just let me increase the size of the font here a fraction. And what I'll do is I'll also duplicate this table. It's a matrix, actually. So I'll duplicate the matrix and what I'll do is I'll remove the hit count from this new matrix and instead I'm going to write a DAX formula. So not super hard. This is effectively custom time intelligence. So I'm going to right click and write a new measure. And this will be the change in a given year. You could call it whatever you want. And I'm going to start to manipulate filtering behavior. And so I need to use the calculate function. So I want to calculate the sum of the change in headcount. So that's ultimately what I want to do. But I need to manipulate the filtering behavior before I can do that. And so the formula I need to write is this. If I take any given year, let's say 2023, what I need to do is get a running total of all of the values up to and including the year that I've selected, so 2023. And so if I take 2023 at this point in time, then the years that I need to include are the years 2021, 2022 and 2023. And the reason I'm explaining it this way is because the first thing I'm going to do inside this formula I'll just close this off and we'll keep this bit of code and come back to it in a moment. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write a variable and I'm going to check what is the largest year that is currently filtered. I'll call this max year. And I'll just write a simple DAX formula, which is max of the years year. And just to test that formula, I'll go return max year. And let's take a look at what that formula does. And if I add it in, not surprisingly, when I'm looking at the year 2023, the maximum is 2023. When there is no filter, in other words, it's all data, the maximum is 2025. And I'm going to use this variable inside my formula. And so now instead of returning max year, I'm going to say calculate the sum of the change in the headcount but before you do that, I want to put a filter so that the year's year is less than or equal to the max year. I'll just do a quick tick. And now you can see that that gives me the answer that I'm wanting to achieve. Now, just for completeness, this formula has lots of things happening under the hood. And so what I'd like to show you is the full version of this formula. The full version is filter all years and only keep where the year is less than max year. I'm not sure why the IntelliSense is not working there. That's certainly correct formula. And so this is the full version of the formula. The short version is just to specify years year is less than max year. But the full syntax version is to say filter all years where year year is less than max year. So this is a form of custom time intelligence and you can see it achieves the results. It allows my end user community to enter the change at any given time. And the formula will go ahead and work out the absolute number of headcount that exists with those changes that are made above.